go qual mina and fallere. Playing diplomat with Robert was fun and all, but it's not me. It's not us. So grab an axe, because we're going raiding. And I didn't even know this was a thing, but we're raiding the Mediterranean. Well, not just raiding, but also ruining history in Rome, Cordoba, Tunis and Paris. We start with a quaint little village in what seems to be Monaco, and since winter is over, we can begin our saga. Our fierce men are trained in the stave church. The sea is our highway of destruction. Taking the first exit at Corsica, where our friends were waiting, the plundering begins on the Italians. I don't see the point of telling this, everyone knows the church is where you find all the money. Just ask Beretta. With Corsica being returned to nature, we scout for Sardinia and move there post haste. For gold is plenty and we need it all. Bjorn was left behind because they did the 3 2 1 no one else can come. It was shitty, but he understands the rules. Back home, feudal age starts coming up because the islands might be too easy, but we can't expect the big cities to fall to a handful of angry, ill equipped men. The 3 2 1 treaty expires just as we reach Fildo, and a fresh batch of raiders start making their way towards Sardinia to finish the job, but not without picking up the now very annoyed Bjorn from Corsica. The scientists start working on some metal witchcraft, and we continue dismantling every building because, spoiler alert, this is pretty much the premise of the whole scenario. While our brave warriors play reverse Bob the Builder, we scout the seas for what's waiting for us in Africa, and it's if Ifri Ifri Ifrikia. Now that's a weird way to spell Africa. We impale the survivors and decide to go for France first, since it's the closest objective, and train some archers, cause I can just see the sea of monks trying to bring Christianity into us. If this wasn't southern France, it would be so inviting to live in. Ships in Sardinia start being loaded, and Castle Age starts being researched in our town center. Our recruits are loaded with the rest of the army and we take the dumbest possible trip around the base, because it's the 9th century and no one has thought about building a bridge here. At least reinforcements will be a breeze to bring over here. Castle Age is upon Bjorn and his band of rascals and the raiding of Europe's punching bag begins. I just knew these degenerates would be trying to convert me. Jokes on them, I will burn in hell from the day I die. With Castle Age, we unlock new fun toys, like longboats and the Conqueror of Death and everyone on the map starts sweating profusely. But I don't load my rams, because anarchy. God damn monks everywhere. I don't feel good killing the clergy, but they don't respect my beliefs. And yes, I see the irony of me saying this while looting all their churches. But I'm not telling the survivors to start believing in Odin, I don't care what the slaves believe in. Ceremonial impalings go as planned, and we scout our next target just across the Pyrenees. It feels wrong to have Huskars as Vikings, but I wipe the tears of shame on the excess pierce armor. More buddies are found in the mountains roasting a goat, and we continue on our way down Spain. We meet our first heavily guarded enemies, but at this point there's no resistance left, and in seconds the city is overrun, all its buildings set ablaze, and the surviving population not eligible for mandatory service impaled in the town square. The army starts making its way back towards Paris, and a captured princess is brought back to our camp to for some cheeky ransoming. Imperial Age arrives just in time for the Siege of Paris, upgrading the whole army to elite. Oh my god, fuck off with the conversions. The raiding of the countryside starts as usual, but unlike the other villages, Paris decides to try and hold itself, and despite having a decently sized army, it's only a matter of time until we are rampaging inside the city. And you know what they say, right? When in Paris? I gotta say, the city here looks really cool, it's such a shame to dismantle it completely. Maybe I can just go for the wonder and leave the rest somewhat intact. Apparently not, but I'm sure siege rams can do the trick just fine. I'm so glad the Frankish wonder is not the Notre Dame Cathedral, or this scene would feel too cheap even for me. With the city properly impaled, we continue raising the countryside and killing more holy men along the coast while more of our rams get absolutely wrecked by the French last stand. Maybe I must lure their army away from the castles first and build more piles of bones around the moat before sending in the siege. Works like a charm, and the first wonder is gone in 1 hour and 10 minutes. I don't even know why I keep getting surprised by my own incompetence after so many scenarios. But hey, at least France is gone. Down south we find a Saracen wonder that doesn't count for the objective, but topple that anyways for good measure. Then we find a replica of the Ottoman Hagia Sophia and topple that as well, just to show who's boss. With the main army arriving in Spain, the Berbers throw bodies at us to try and stop the madness, but they are no match for the Horned Devils and in no time the first fortress gets put on siege. And when I say siege, I mean some moron left the gates open, and we run in with the biggest viking hard-on for destruction ever. We then practice an amphibious assault on some random tau, capture another princess and impale more survivors or Odin in the town square. 
Yes, boys, today we dance to Abba a celebration, for tomorrow we march on towards another unsuspecting Moorish town. Looking past the carnage, I have to give credit to the creator of the scenario. It feels like I'm on a completely different map from before. Really good job making the map feel varied here. Now looking back at the carnage, another town is pillaged and we move to take the second wonder. The city is defended by walls, but only briefly and we cause more unprecedented destruction. They may call us evil, but the roads and walls are still here. The next tenant will appreciate that, I'm sure of it. We make our way to the coast and start loading the ships, because the fun is at its peak, but it's nowhere near being done. Oh crap, I shouldn't have done this. It was a bit of a scare, but we clear the seas and the troops start landing in modern day Morocco. Or is it ancient day Morocco? Either way, it's definitely not the same place as this was, and oh, another buddy of ours. Can you imagine how awful the heat here must be for some white ass Swedes with axes and capes? We arrive at another coastal town under onager shots, and chaos sets in immediately. Most of the army gets annihilated by their catapults and castle, but most don't mean all, and we become even more brutal as payback. God damn it, I hate playing against onager so much. While another army is being trained back home, we continue raising this town out of pettiness, and because we need to wait for them as well. The longship scout ahead and it seems like the third wonder is just out there for the taking. Well, almost. The army arrives and in a two-pronged attack, Tunis feels the fury of Odin. What the fuck, where did this dude come from? The sea giveth and the sea tooketh, and now the sea tooketh Tunis. With only one wonder missing in Rome, we move quickly to Sicily and start pushing from the Alps at the same time. Sicily grants us another princess, who is swiftly melted into 500 gold. After another quick boat hopping, the army marches north because this is Age of Empires 2. Rome is just there, begging to be sacked. I am 99% sure the Vikings have never done this, but here we are, blasting their wonder with siege rams. I love this game. Unfortunately, this isn't the end of our Mediterranean saga. One of our buddies is still missing somewhere in the Balkans. I don't like this one bit, because if history has taught us anything is that you just leave these folks alone. It's never worth messing around in the region. However, I have no idea where he is, so we roll back to check the remaining Italian cities. We start with the Byzantine controlled body and catch a glimpse of something scary, their navy. But that is only in the water and after leveling the city, nothing was found. The march moves back north and stops by a city I couldn't find on Google Maps, so we probably got leveled, something we take to heart and recreate as nicely as we can. Pew pew, die trash. The navy starts moving towards the Byzantines, but they don't want any of our shenanigans and push us back almost to Africa. That doesn't phase us one bit and we continue moving by land up north while still trying to penetrate the Adriatic Sea. It's rough, I don't like fighting demolition or fire ships. In a lapse of focus trying to figure out what to do with the army, the navy gets completely wiped out, but at least this asshole decides to light up a campfire and show his location. We finish raising Trieste and resupplying the army and start venturing into the truly scary part of the map. Legends say these lands are plagued by some of the most horrifying war crimes ever seen. Naturally I want an autograph, so we stop by Split to torch the city in hopes of attracting their attention. It doesn't go as well as I have hoped. We stay anyway to finish the city, but are left with the sliver of the power we brought with us. While more friends make way, the remaining troops run around the area trying to scout Vitzerk's location. Because as beautiful as the map is, and as fun raiding new locations is, it's already over 3 hours. Nothing is found, so we march even further east just to find this dipshit just hanging around the cabin. Fuck free play, not after 3 hours. And the scenario finally ends, at 3 hours 9 minutes and 16 seconds. Scenario time ends at the amount said before, 9 minutes and a second over a quarter plus 3 hours. No reason to say it like this besides avoiding redundancy. Anyways, this was great, it's a viking scenario in the Mediterranean and it plays exactly like you should. I miss the voice lines and character speaking, but I think here that is overshadowed by something that's just plain fun. I think if I played this knowing the scenario better the time could have been brought down to maybe 2 hours, but whatever. The partial time now stands at 194 hours 25 minutes and 19 seconds. Apparently bitching about Pachacuti was something people liked a lot, so I'll be doing more of that. Now with Pachacuti, but with other scenarios and campaigns. If anyone has suggestions or requests, just let me know. Ring, 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 ring. Hey mom, you're not gonna believe this. We hit a thousand subs, isn't that great? Nada de namorada, né? Haha, <laughs> no no, you are the best.